what's up world so right now i'm about to go to the dealership to go fix my car because on saturday i went to pick it up it was supposedly finished with the recall repairs and as i started to drive it i started to have some trouble first it said the car was overheating and then it said a battery warning message and then eventually the car wouldn't start so i didn't know what to expect i thought it was related to the fuse box but after doing my homework and scanning the car with my MHD, I decided it's some, it could be something else. Um, on the MSD, I had a, a serial port data fault, uh, BSD, and also had lost communication with the water pump. I had an IBS sensor code and something else. So I think the battery cables in the trunk that go to the f little firewall thing in the trunk may be corroded because there was a bunch of rust looking residue inside the inside the the battery compartment and i seen somebody had the same issue and they had the same water pump and alternator issue because they are linked on the same serial port so Right now I'm gonna go down to the dealer, ask for my keys, and I'm gonna try to remove the battery, clean those terminals, reset the codes, and go from there. The other issue may be that because I initially had that antifreeze leak when I first got the car running, it was on the water pump. So eight antifreeze may have gotten to the connector, shorting that serial port out. So we're gonna find out right now. I'm here at the dealership I just took the battery out and you guys see all the rust in here and I actually found this positive cable to be loose the other one seems loose as well I'm gonna take this apart clean it up I may purchase a new cable from DMW if I have to and then take it from there both cables are actually loose look even this one is loose too the main positive so I'm gonna take these out right now. All right, what's the world? So I'm back in the trunk. If you look inside here, you see the amount of corrosion. It's crazy. Uh, the terminals look really bad. And right now my whole game plan is to try to tighten these cables down to see if it works before I buy the cables. This nut right here that I'm holding was a 13 millimeter socket to take it off. I had to use a 10 millimeter socket that's how badly corroded it was and here's the other one over here let me find it this one right here was supposed to be a 10 millimeter socket and I used a 7 millimeter to take it off that's how corroded that was so I'm starting to think this was definitely causing my problems Okay guys, so I got the new cables here from BMW. This is the main positive terminal and also this auxiliary positive cable. So I'm gonna remove the battery now and get rid of those old corroded cables. All right, so I got the power distribution off. Got the battery out right here. And you guys see down in there, I'm gonna disconnect those two cables. Okay, so I used a wire brush and I tried to scrub as much as the rust as I could and I vacuumed it out. Then I used some electrical parts cleaner, put some tape around those terminals, and now I'm gonna lay down some primer. Here you guys see I put down the first coat of primer. I'm gonna let it dry some, put another coat, and I'm probably gonna paint it black. Now you guys can see it with the black. I'm pretty sure I could have made it a lot neater, but Nobody's really gonna see in there once the battery's in there. So we got a new battery terminal, new battery auxiliary cable. We got the battery hold down. I put some electrical tape around it because the edges are a little sharp. We got the battery strap, the distribution block, the battery, and some hardware. Okay, everything is back together. 
and the battery is secure, it won't move at all. Okay people, so right now I'm about to prep the car for the tuner. We're going to the tuner tomorrow. Today is Friday and basically what I'm going to do is instead of running 530, I'm switching to the Motul XS8100 and it's 540. And also I have a magnetic drain plug with crush washers. I have this spark plug gap tool i have the fuel pump removal tool we're going two step colder on the spark plugs with these ngks the part number is going to be 97506 and then the stage two low pressure fuel pump by fuel it so we need to get all these on the car before we go to the tuner tomorrow draining Okay, now it's time to change the fuel pump. I popped the seat out. If you guys are wondering how you get the seat out, just scoop your hand under here and don't be scared to pull. Pull really hard and it'll pop out. I gotta vacuum all this shit out of here first. And then you gotta lift up this mat and then the fuel pump's right there. Hello. got the mat up we got it cleaned and now we got to take off these four 10 millimeter bolts gain access to the fuel pump got all four bolts removed now you guys can see the pump under there okay got this disconnected so now I'm going to start the car with it unplugged so that way we could purge the fuel system it should run out of gas and stall Alright, it just stalled, so it should be purged now. Okay, so I disconnected both the lines. You just push in these tabs right here push in the tabs and pull up that's how you release it it's hard for me to record and do it at the same time so you guys got to bear with me so then I got this tool right here from um, fuel it is to remove that locking ring some people use like a hammer and a flathead but I just rather get the tool you know and now I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise to take that locking ring off Definitely get the tool. It was pretty tight on there, but I got it off pretty easy with that tool So that's what the locking ring looks like. I got some rags just in case some fuel tries to drip out when I pull this up First thing you want to do is remove this clip out of this hose right here I'm not sure what it's for But it runs over to the other side of the gas tank and you won't get the pump out without disconnecting this hose Oh my god, that green clip is a pain in my ass, bro. I'm trying to disconnect it. I'm going to try using a needle nose. I was using a flathead, but it wasn't working. So I got the pump assembly out. 
looks like the bucket had a crack in it so now i'm going to try to disassemble this stuff so all you need from the bucket is basically the fuel level float and the top piece first thing i'm going to install is the sock on the bottom of the pump okay so that fuel level unit goes on the back of the pump like that with the green wires poking out of the cutout and then you put the washers with the cotter pins and then secure it in the back like that and also this elbow i rotated it 90 degrees it was facing the wires but i got it facing straight ahead so there it is all assembled and ready to go let's get it back inside the car now